to say thanks to everyone for coming out and for working so hard the last few weeks and months. Christina, what a crazy first year you've inherited. It's pretty, pretty exciting. Teachers, y'all, working staff, without knowing what's going on, coming up here. So I just, I, I feel a huge debt of gratitude to everyone for the amount of work everyone's been putting into this. Um, I want to tell you a few things about Friends of Harvey Milk. I am the treasurer. I've been trying not to be the treasurer for a long time. I still am. Um, we have uh, two co-chairs right now, uh, Ellen and Carmen, and uh, a few other board members. I'll go through it a little bit. We started as a 501c3 in 2006, and we did so. A group of parents got together mainly to facilitate uh, the acceptance of donations that were otherwise getting turned away. Basically, some foundations, corporate matching programs were saying, hey, we want to give you guys money, but you need a 501c3. We didn't have one. We created one mainly to facilitate that. Um, in 2007, so we started with pretty humble beginnings. In 2007, the uh, Parent Faculty Club was then running the after school program, which runs about a quarter million dollar a year budget. So once that was cut, and they said, well, look, you can't, you can't run it through the PFC. Friends of Harvey Milk stepped up. We kind of adapted into our charter uh, the after school program because we had a 501c3 and, and we've had a really steep learning curve in trying to keep up with all of the foundation requirements or the federal grant requirements as administered by uh, SFUSD. So that's pretty complicated. Um, we currently have a board of six people they include Carmen Morrison and Ellen Parker, who are the co-chairs. Brian Simmons is the secretary, and I'm the treasurer. Those are official corporate positions, basically. Um, Jennifer Dunn and Christina Velasco are, are also board members. Uh, a few things about our bylaws that are helpful. A lot of people have asked about this recently. Um, board members may not be paid. We can have up to nine board members, and so far we've self-limited ourselves to have no more than three parents three community members, and three faculty and staff. And that's not uh, explicit in the bylaws, but that's something that we've done. We haven't had a huge overwhelming response of people really until this year wanting to get involved. And, and this has been an exciting year in terms of people really contributing from the community and new parents and, and other stuff like that. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the funding that we do, we essentially take um, grant requests at the beginning of the year, and traditionally it's been submitted by the principal over the last three years, um, which is done in coordination with the PFC budget. So at the beginning of the year, we look at what we want to try and fund for the year, and that's how we determine it. Uh, it has to fall into one of six categories, outdoor education and athletics, visual and performing arts, science in the schools, civil rights reading, health and nutrition, and technology integration. So if you can't fit something into one of those six categories, it probably isn't happening at school. Um, uh, let's see, so uh, grants are then approved by a majority vote of the board. And last year, I'm just throwing facts out at you here, uh, last year we brought in, or this year, we brought in about $20,000 in donations. So typically we try to not spend more than $20,000 in any given year just to be conservative with our fundraising expectations and trying to keep the budget going. Um, uh, we've run some numbers in terms of, of what available cash we have, uh, which I wanted to put out there. Um, it's a little bit complicated when we take into account the restricted funds that we have from after school. I could go into great detail with this. I'm just gonna tell you that, that if we spent all the money that we have to possibly spend tomorrow, it would be around $90,000. So that's the available unrestricted funds that we have. It keeps some money set aside to pay for after school for the rest of this year. And it does not take into account any kind of insurance costs, bookkeeping costs, which we do incur. So that's uh, just something to throw out there in terms of money that friends of. And so, you know, as we all work together, of course, you know, the board would have to decide officially, but I mean, I think everyone's in it for the same thing here is, is, is the best thing for the kids and for the school. I think that we're better off than a lot of schools because we have the 501c3. We can raise outside money. We have a really unique mission at the school here, and I think that's an advantage for us in terms of trying to carry forward in this in this real positive vision. 